Hello, everyone. Welcome to our live stream. My name is Wes, and I'll be your host. Uh, today, we have an expert in the field of digital textile materials, Pauline Water, texture artist. She will discuss her fashion material collection for Substance Source, dedicated to a diverse range of traditional outfits and weaves. Pauline will show how she achieved photorealistic results, including laces, embroideries, patchworks, braided threads, and more. So uh, Pauline, thank you so much for joining us here today. It's, uh, it's an honor and it's awesome to have you here. And also, while, while I'm saying this, I, I want to congratulate you on joining the Substance team here at Adobe. I'm personally thrilled to be able to uh, uh, work with you on a daily basis. So welcome to the stream, Pauline. Thank you so much for having me. All right, well, uh, we could just actually just jump in and get started. So uh, when you're ready to uh, start your presentation, just go ahead and, uh, and just enter in your screen share and uh, we'll get going. Yep, should be good. <clears throat> so, um, hi, uh, as a tiny introduction, uh, my name is Pauline. If you don't know me, I've been working with Substance Designer for quite a few years now. Um, I taught my, myself how to create materials using Substance Designer. And I've been working as a freelance artist for uh, a bit more than five years and as a texture artist for two years, a bit more than two years. And I am a corgi enthusiast. I I like them. Uh, you can find me pretty much anywhere uh, on the internet, looking for either Japlus or Polingo directly. Um, and yeah, um, I, as I try to uh, put something up, like as a pitch to introduce myself, I realize that. Um, uh, all the work that I did and um, everything that has been uh, popular, kind of, uh, it was really quick and it, a lot happened in just the two last years, uh, starting from um, an article in Substance magazine, like with my quote, and everything went very fast after that. And I had uh, amazing opportunities to work with a lot of people. Because I, I don't have like 15 years of experiences or stuff like that, but it was uh, in a really short amount of time, really great experiences uh, in the field of mainly fabric because I like I had kind of a feeling with it, so it worked pretty well. Um, and so it was uh, kind of obvious uh, that I had to work on fabrics again for the the signature collection when I was asked uh, like in last November of 2019 uh, I right away knew that I was working going to work on some fabrics that I didn't know really what what kind and um, what kind of techniques that I wanted to share um, that was both interesting visually and interesting as like a technique like how to create materials because I I've created a lot of really intricate patterns and materials, but most of them are not really useful. So I wanted to combine the two and get a better, like both materials that were looking good and that were really useful and easy to play with. So uh, here you can see the different outfits. It's kind of like in two parts. There was like outfits first and then I had some other materials that I, they were just, the references were just too good looking. So I had to like try it out and create something uh, around it. So uh, yeah, basically each of the five here uh, outfits were separated in like two um, materials. And um, for each, I gathered a lot of info, a lot of references because I wanted both to be good looking in 3D, but I really wanted to uh, translate the, the, how would you say that, the, the, the skills that the people are actually, it requires a lot of skill to create real outfits like that. And I wanted it to be translated in the material as well, so that it could look uh, beautiful, like from far away and also from up close. 
um, and to really like get into details with each techniques and I actually learned a lot uh, trying to understand how they were creating creating each material in real life so I can replicate it the proper way in 3D. So yeah, I've learned quite a lot about it. And after that, there was like five other materials to complete the collection. And those were inspired by mostly intricate patterns that I, I have a thing for that. Uh, and bright colors. I really loved uh, looking for different references around the world because like there's so many people uh, uh, creating art with fabric uh, around the world is just fascinating to me. So I had to make like tough de decisions and um, select only five, only five of them uh, to get a proper kind of view of around the world and stay in like tea. Um, and same thing, I wanted to be looking good from far away and from up close and to get as much detail as I could get uh, because the real materials are, are full of tiny details and it's just fascinating. So I tried to uh, make the same thing, uh, but only using Substance Designer. Um, so in, the, in this slide, we're gonna try to take a look at two different materials. Uh, the first one is, uh, uh, the, the lace. Uh, the lace wasn't actually uh, my uh, first go. Uh, I tried to do one uh, before as a first try and you, you'll realize uh, fairly quickly looking between my portfolio and uh, the collection that a lot of them were made two times. Um, the first is usually just a tryout to see if, it, if at all it can work and the second one is just taking part of and looking at what can be improved uh, in that specific material so this is um, the v2 of the lace i'd say uh, and i don't really want to spend too much time on that material uh, i just wanted to show you like kind of a quick tip um, because if we take a closer look now at the, the material, you can see here all the blue uh, frames are just patterned and it's just to create those uh, those shapes. So here you can see we have uh, a flower right here and it's just a combination of a few patterns um, that are put together that way. <clears throat> and so that part is like the shape, the creating the shape is can be interesting, but it's not why I actually like that material that much. Uh, it was a real pain in the ass, if I can say that, to create, uh, because it's like really um, hard to me to get my head around how lace is actually made and to create materials. I try to at least understand a little bit um, how it was actually made so I can translate it better. Uh, but in that case, lace is just, um, I don't know, it was like, it's cute, it's cute looking. I like lace and people are like, were asking for me to create something like that because it's something that you don't find really um, as a procedural material. So <clears throat> I try to create one the best that I could and um, I really wanted it to be easy to play around and um, adapt uh, to whatever uh, project you're working on. So here, for example, if we take uh, a close look at that leaf, for example, you can see it's the basic shape and in the end, the, the, the pattern I'm working with is that kind of weird looking, uh, weird colored uh, pattern right here. Um, and there's a few basic rules that you can, um, that if you understand them, uh, you can create whatever you want uh, with the, the lace material in the end. So here you can see uh, using the RGBA merge, I can plug in um, kind of masks uh, of the shapes that I want. And 
each time you will see that the green one is the outline, the red one is uh, a kind of knot, the blue one is another, and the alpha stays the alpha, the opacity. And so that way I can create uh, really uh, intricate patterns like that. If it shows up, yeah. Uh, and you see the red one is a kind of uh, a kind of knot, and the blue one is another. And that way, I just have to focus on that part uh, at, at, on the beginning, like the pattern at the beginning. And the rest of it just depends on that node right here. That one is a multi-switch, so I can switch between a ribbon or uh, just a, um, a, a plain square. Uh, and you can switch between the two uh, depending on what you need. If you need to do like just a ribbon or if you have to like make a whole drape, uh, you can have the two options here. Um, there's, there's a parameter for that. And so uh, when, hey, once uh, you understand- Pauline? Yep. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, just one, one really That's quick question. Okay. So, so when yep. you have these, uh, it looks like you have these IDs that you have here. Um, yeah. you, you had mentioned something earlier I thought was really interesting that you said that you, you, know, you kind of researched the patterns just to kind of see how the weaves were made and things like that. So, so this technique where you're using these IDs and stuff, that, that you just kind of came up with this yourself as after kind of doing some research on how the cloth is actually made? Is it kind of like that? Like, uh, yeah, I had to like look for a lot of different uh, uh, kind of uh, lace actually, because in, it's like a traditional kind of thing in France, but there's a lot of uh, techniques that are, that are used to create uh, lace. And that one is actually inspired by the Chantilly lace um and the one we the people know the the best is usually the calais uh from calais from the north of france uh but uh yeah it's usually like always the same kind of and it was the the, the easiest to translate uh, to translate because as you can see here everywhere there's an outline and so i can create masks fairly easily but on other cases, there's no outlines at all, and it's just the blending of the the knots that are in the back, uh, and they just merge perfectly uh, together. And it was just uh, too too difficult to replicate easily. So yeah, I, I went for that one. It was the 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 pretty and easy way to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And for the uh, for the shapes that you're creating, if you go to the beginning of your graph, are, are yep. you do you start any of this with like an SVG or is it just completely oh, no, no. like just? It's uh, the the whole beginning is is a, a disc. That's oh, all wow. I have at the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> wow. and it's a uh, it's a uh, yeah a lot of transform, a lot of mm. uh, blur and mirror a lot. Since everything is pretty much. Um, Usually in lace, you always have like some kind of floral pattern, and the 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 drawing of the flower is usually the same. It always has that kind of roundish uh, petals, and that are separated in in uh, multiple parts. So uh, that kind of uh, of flower shape is is used a lot, and it's pretty easy to make. Uh, as you can see here, just for one petal, I just take um, uh, transformations that like the same disc uh, from the beginning goes in the transformation and it creates like kind of a heart shape right here. And then you can just play uh, with it with a warp to get um, uh, to get it go down a bit and using a transform to get that shape at the uh, on the inside. And every time it's uh, pretty much the same, you have that mask and edge detect and a blend right away because that that is basically my mask, as you can see in the uh, red channel. Uh, the edge detect is always like the outline, so it will go in the green channel. And I just blend the two of them uh, in the screen or add or whatever, just to get the two shapes on top of each other. And that thing goes directly into the alpha. And um, before I found this technique, I actually learned it from Eric Wiley, uh, watching his stream. 
And before that, I was using a uh, material transform and uh, I was cheating uh, in a sense that for like the, the base color was one output, one, one mask, the roughness was another mask and everything. I just used like uh, that thing as a transform for moving all the pieces together. But that way is way cleaner and way easier to get the shapes done. So that's why I tried to use that technique a lot more uh, working on that collection. Um, I wanted to show actually both the, the lace and the, the, the Indian skirt material because they both use that same technique but for different things. Uh, and so it's, it showcases pretty much how, um, what you can do using that technique. Uh, not only you can work on masks, but you can work on eight maps too and you can do pretty much anything. So that's two uh, case scenarios where you can use that technique. Um, yeah, and I was selling like the flowers and yeah, everything goes to that node right over here. Um, and now if you like, uh, don't really like that pattern, I would understand <laughs> you can change it as you wish because you just have to pay attention like um, how is built the, the, the input and recreate it yourself. So for example, here, if we take a look at the, the multi-switch, um, in the end, you can see that uh, looking at the channels here, you can click there and see only the red part. So as you can see, it's a basic uh, mask. Uh, looking at the green one, it's only uh, the outlines and the blue ones is another mask. And all I have to do is um, plug any uh, image with that kind of um, uh, setting and it will recreate a lace pattern in the end. So I did a quick thing earlier just to show you. Here I have a, a, a little pattern, as you can see, it's a leaf, the same exact ID. Uh, so I have my blue mask, red mask, and the outlines in the greens. And that way, if I just uh, unplug everything here and plug it in place, you'll see that the pattern will go up right there and it's already, uh, like you already have the good knots in, that's a big, a bit big for that pattern, but you have the idea. You'll get the outlines uh, going in the good direction, the good uh, loops that some people may recognize from a tutorial that I made. Um, you have that same technique here. Uh, and of course, you can totally change uh, all those knots uh, in, the, in the, the, the final render. Here are used loops, but if you want to lose uh, to like use any other kind of knots, because there's a lot of different knots uh, when creating a lace, you can create your own. Just as you can see here, it's uh, just uh, one loop over there that is simply plugged in a tile generator with quite a lot of them. Like say it's a, a hundred by a hundred and all that part here is just like to give it a little uh, wavy effect so it doesn't look too stiff because that's the, the usually the, the artist way uh, to get good looking fabric is because creating those with, uh, with designer, uh, it usually looks like pretty stiff and really geometric and real pattern, uh, real fabric is usually like really messed up from up close. So that way you can have like some uh, wiggly stuff and there's no um, regularity in this. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, uh, and right there I created like that pattern directly inside designer, but you can totally like create um, one using, I don't know, Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever. Uh, software you're using to draw and create something. Uh, uh, just keeping in mind always that uh, the the blue channel and the red channel and the green channel each have like a role 
in that material. But when you keep that in mind, you can pretty much create anything. And that's why it ended up being the most annoying and the best material I had to do for that collection. So I, I hope uh, I'll see people try this out and make your own. Um, the, the whole point of, the, um, of this collection was mainly to create like tools for people to have fun with. Uh, because creating lace is like really uh, hard and not that fun to be honest. Uh, that way you can like take each piece, uh, the, keep the one you want, keep the one you like, and rework all the rest. So that way you could you could basically delete all the um, the blue squares at the beginning and just get here, plug your bitmap or whatever right there and you'll have the final result and then you can like change the color the roughness and the metallic uh, to get the proper look you want for any of your projects so yep that's pretty much it for the lace um that, that's it's 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 mind blowing. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. I'm looking, at, you know. But I will say, you, you had mentioned that this is version two, right? So so I don't yeah. know, man. Maybe you need a version three because it, it, it's not looking so great, you know. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm I'm just teasing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is like mind blowing. You look at this and you're like, ah, I mean, I just I just mesmerized by the you know, uh, and I love the technique you have about how you're using the mass to create this. It, it, it's so incredible. Um, th this, and um, forgive me for not knowing this, but this, this drop, is it, is it already on source? Is it available now or is it coming soon? No, no, it is available. And uh, the lace is actually, the lace and the, the Indian skirt are actually two of the free items. So you can oh, awesome. get those like now. It's been yeah. online for like, uh, I, I think it's just a week. It was okay. like just a week. Yeah, and and just to reiterate for 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 those listening, like the 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 file that it, even the free ones, it, it is the SBS host, the source substance designer file. They can open, see all the nodes, and it's almost like a, a whole tutorial in it of itself. They can see everything that you did. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's um, awesome. Yeah, and there's uh, there's a lot of different techniques because I I try to um, to get like similar uh, materials, but they all have like. I try to teach myself something uh, doing each material, either in the technique that I've learned from the references or directly inside designer. And for each of the 15 materials, there's always like a, a little, like a little tip or uh, something that I've learned along the way to do, especially that material. So yeah. It was overall a really, really interesting collection to create, honestly. Yeah, the, the detail and the quality is, is just outstanding. Uh, it, it's, it's really amazing. I think one of the questions uh, that were coming in, I'm going to go ahead and just answer this one, but they were asking, um, did you simulate the garment yourself? I, I guess what they mean is the, the 3D mesh that you're using in the 3D view. Oh, yeah, uh, that thing, yeah. it's. Um... Yeah, I used a Marvelous Designer to do that. Um, I actually use Marvelous a lot uh, to get like nice renders. And uh, yeah, it's basically just a square uh, if we uh, do that. As you can see, just like a basic square. And uh, you, you may be recognize it because like there's that kind of bird shape in it. Um, it's basically the mesh for all my fabric renders on my art station. So yeah, yeah. it's 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 always the same. <laughs> yeah, I, I I wonder if we can include it now. I mean, um, maybe it's something they can add to Designer or Alchemist or something. Yeah, there's a there's a, like a, a cloth, but on a sphere that is available yeah. already. I think in Alchemist uh, that you can already find and try out stuff on it, and that's pretty useful. Uh, it's just that I like to uh, have different like uh, simulations. Like if it's a really thin uh, material or a really thick one, I like to be able to change up uh, the the base. So I don't use that much the the sphere, but um, I mean the cloth mesh. But yeah, it's uh, 
it's a really cool way to see because like usually when you look at a fabric on a sphere on a basic sphere um you don't really get the like the, the same reflections and the same like uh, behavior than on something something like really foldy ish <laughs> so yeah you get a better a better view with yeah that. this is this is so much better. Yeah, maybe maybe now that you're that you're working with a team, you can make some of these. <laughs> I'll try to suggest. That, 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 yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, if there's no specific question on the list, maybe we can go to the the the, the Indian skirt if it's okay. Yeah, sure. That's good. Let's do that. Let's sit there. Yeah, um, so the the graph may look, at, at, at first it may look a bit uh, intimate, intimidating, I'd say, but it's really not that big of a deal once you zoom in a bit. Um, because you'll see, uh, again, it's pretty much the same ID than the lace we just watched, um, except here, I still have like my RGBA merge here. Uh, with the same ID, uh, the except this time, I had to find a way to get uh, the eight map, the mask for the uh, the sequins, uh, and for the um, uh, the kind of I don't even know how to <laughs> um, like the tiny rope that you can see. I wanted them to have like two different materials, but um, I couldn't do like a lot of, um, before I used that technique, I was usually duplicating a lot of tile samplers. And I've learned <laughs> that um, the tile samplers are, are actually not that good ID uh, because it's really like um, heavy on the graph and it's not really like the good, the good thing to do. So I try to work my way around and uh, instead of having like uh, a tile sample for the eight map and one for that mask and another one for that mask and a fourth one for the alpha, uh, I just like used uh, that technique. And here you can see uh, the same ID, except the red channel is my eight map. The green one is the, the sequin material and the blue one is the, the rope, and the alpha stays the alpha, it's the opacity of how it all. And that way I can just create um, a, kind of the same uh, floral thing. I have a thing with flowers, apparently. Uh, and uh, yeah, so that way I can create like um, uh, one, of the, one of the petals and just splatter them and add some pieces along the way um, way more easily than working with uh, four materials that I have to blend and unblend uh, each time. That way I just have one, I can splatter it the way I want and just tweak it at the end and it's, it stays the same and that way I can get like that flower with what looks like a lot of notes, but honestly, it's not that much compared to what I did it um, before. And here, uh, as you can see, it's always like those weird colors, but it works exactly the same as the lace before. And so uh, here you can see the uh, same ID. Everything at the beginning here is uh, the, the pattern. And the whole material really starts at uh, this node right here. That way I have here the whole materials, all the mask, uh, the height map, all the mask and the alpha in one node. And I just have to split it and use it as mask for, uh, if we take a look at the colors, for example, uh, I have the base, the, base uh, the red base, and then I have here the, uh, both the sequin, it's the lighter yellow, and the beige is the rope. And 
as you can see, I can just I can just like get those masks back and blend them together to create uh, that kind of thing. Um, and after that, there's only like a few, a, a tiny variation in the color just to get it like a bit more funky, I guess. But yeah, it's uh, it's always the same the same kind of ID. And what's uh, uh, useful with that kind of technique is that if you don't like uh, the like that kind of sequin, and you would like I don't know another shape or um, maybe another kind of bead, uh, if you'd like some other kind of beading, you can totally um, like change just that part up and everything uh, will change in the end. Um, and exactly like I did for the lace, I wanted um, uh, to have a material that was, that I had, that I had a lot of different function. Uh, but you you can use it like in a lot of different um, situations. For so for that one, uh, I actually had to uh, create a whole lehenga only um, uh, only with two materials. So I had to have all the 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 parts uh, for the skirt and for the the top part as one material. Uh, so I had to do like a square that was styling, uh, uh, where is it, somewhere in there, uh, and that way you have like a, uh, the whole uh, square, and then you can have only trims, like that one, and you can find them all in the parameters here, so if you go in the pattern selection, if you, here you have the bottom part with all the beadings and the flowers. The top part is a plain fabric uh, with only tiny, uh, tiny flowers and one trim at the bottom. And the middle one is just that same plain fabric with the little uh, flowers uh, on top of it. You can change uh, uh, pretty much all the colors. The, the roughness and the materials for each uh, bead. <clears throat> and the, the other material uh, that goes with the Indian outfit works pretty much the same. You have a trim and a base material. Like You can twist up some stuff uh, and create a lot of variation using just that, that material. Um, and yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Like the the interesting part here was to manage to get um, all the shapes and all the aids in the um, easiest way and the cleanest way possible. Because there there's like a lot of information that you have to uh, put together to get that material in the end. Uh, but I I had to like create something that was kind of user proof so that you can play with it without breaking it like um, when playing around with the the parameters and stuff like that so you can pretty much do whatever and it always ends up being okay-ish looking <laughs> I'd say um, and it's it was the same idea with pretty much all the other materials it was trying to fit to the references and create something kind of with my own twist, I'd say. So, yeah, I, I, I don't know if there's any, any questions. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, actually, Pauline, that, that would be a good time to look. Um, so one of the questions here was, um, this one was just asking about if you feel comfortable. Let's see. Let's see. Asking. Uh, I, I don't know. I guess this one was um, just asking. I, I don't know. I guess it's more uh, just asking about your work full time. Uh, are you working full time at Substance, or do you work at other design houses too? And if so, where where can they see more of your work? So I guess just asking a little bit more about your your kind of overall like day to day, like like your jobs. Like what what are you doing? 
Well, I used to uh, to teach uh, in some schools in Paris, um, and I was like giving introduction classes and classes for substance designer and substance painter. Um, and I had like a really good time. I've learned a lot there too. But right now, yeah, I'm I'm working full time for the source uh, substance source team. Uh, I started like uh, last December, I think, and it's been yeah just just a year. Uh, last February, sorry, um, it was uh, yeah just a year. As a freelance still, and now full time, full time. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and so uh, another question, uh, th yeah, this is a good one too. This was asking like about um, if they would have a different outcome if they created the pattern, like say they started the pattern in maybe Illustrator or something like that, uh, mm -hmm. rather than from scratch in designer. Is there a, a difference between working, you know, one way or the other, maybe like, a, like we said earlier, using SVG node or importing in like Illustrator Pass, something like that? Well, I, I guess you could do, um, I mean, that's that's why I love uh, Substance Designer. It's just like you can you can do you if you feel more comfortable like creating the thing in Illustrator or or in Photoshop or using only SVG nodes. Uh, you can totally do that. I I just like like I don't know creating patterns. It's you, it may not like it looks like fun for some of, some of the people, but it is to me. So yeah, I, I like to spend some time. Uh, creating uh, those patterns from scratch to your clean site designer. But yeah, you could totally do that from Illustrator, Photoshop, whatever. It works exactly the same. And that's why I wanted to point out the idea that once you understand the RG the, the RGB um, kind of setup, you can do whatever you want with it. Using yeah, like maps or whatever. Right, you could have just maybe used a, a completely different tool uh, and then just packed the maps and brought those in and, and used your system. That, I guess that's the other thing that's so great about designers. You're, you're basically building this system that can be reused, you know, on, yeah. on many different, you know, fabric materials like, like this. So it's like now that you have the system, it really comes down to, oh, I can just replicate a new fabric by just creating new shapes. Yeah, exactly. And that was that was the, the whole idea. It was just so that you you... The, the the toy is already working and you just have to customize it and make some arrangements wherever you want but it, it's like it works you just have to do something with it and you can do absolutely whatever you want yeah and uh well just i guess while we're here on this there, there's let me hit uh, just another question this yeah. one was talking about the pattern switching and you you did kind of show that earlier but m maybe while you have your graph up so it's just asking how was the patterns pattern switching done and i think it was what you showed with um where you you know like you said you have this layered kind of id that you're doing and then you're able to to you know make the patterns in that that way as you feed it into your graph um I'm not sure I understood the question, oh. like the creation of the, the whole. I, no, it's actually more about the pattern switching part. Like you had showed oh. that a little bit earlier where you were able, like I think when you showed the leaf example. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, um, it was actually like a, an idea that I had after <laughs> the, the collection was out. Uh, so uh, I go on to that a bit later with like, uh, um, I don't know. It was just like you—you uh, you can't like have a material that can do only one thing. I did that for a long time, and it never like—it was never used by anybody else but me. And in that situation, I had to think not only to do something uh, uh, cool-looking that I liked, but I had to think about the people that were going to download it and play with it and maybe they don't want to have like flowers and stuff like that. And that way I already gave like three options for like each material. So you can switch between like the ribbon, the trail and the square one for the lace. And that one you can have like the, the bottom, top and middle part, but you can create your own. And it's just a basic like, um, 
uh, multi switch so you can plug like all your three uh, different patterns and it's a parameter that you'll find again if you use it in substance painter for example you'll find that same parameter and you can like put it on any kind of mesh you're working on at the time it was just about like using the same technique and um, kind of duplicate duplicate the, the parts that I wanted and let the rest uh, be just free <laughs> and do <clears throat> I don't know the most the most um, patterns possible like you can create a lot of variations and never have like twice the same material playing around playing around with those so yeah I don't know if that answers the question at all. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It might be <laughs> super versatile in what you can create once you have your system in place. Yeah. Okay, yeah, um, we can we can just keep moving forward then. Uh, yeah, but I, I, I kind of showed everything that I wanted oh. ready to show. Okay, well, <laughs> Maybe no, no it was worries. a bit quick. <laughs> no, that's okay, that's okay. Uh, so, uh, have some more questions for you then. Uh, perfectly. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, this one, the, the other question here was, I think what, earlier when you showed some of your renders, it was asking about uh, pictures rendered in Substance Designer iRay, or uh, did you use like an external renderer? No, it's... Like, I guess, uh, how, how do you render your portfolio shots? Everything is from uh, Designer using iRay. Oh, wow. Okay. Yep. Great. <laughs> I tried, enough. I actually tried to learn uh, Blender for that uh, specific project, but it was two weeks ago. Uh, and I had like, it was too much information <laughs> to get in two weeks. So I said, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll do that the way I know. Uh, but I, I got really interested in, in Blender, looking at people doing incredible stuff. So I'd like to try it, but I'm... I have to find time for that, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I, this is just another question about just kind of the background, but have you ever worked in any fashion house? Uh, yeah, I did. I had the, the opportunity to work with the Louis Vuitton team for a year. Um, I It was a very interesting opportunity because like, I didn't learn a lot, I'd say, uh, regarding a substance designer, but it was an incredible like way to learn about the industry. And uh, you, I, I was like looking at materials that I probably never see again in my life. It was like uh, very, very interesting. There was a lot of I've learned a lot about how everything is is made for the industry and how. Uh, how the colors are picked and how each uh, material is actually, like each props is actually created like a lot of times to get the good, uh, the good idea and how to get like fast and um, different uh, prototypes that you have to deliver pretty quickly so that a, des a decision can be made. And that's why uh, I, it was easiest, it was easier for me uh, using Substance Designer because I uh, I think it's the best way to have like a lot of variations very quickly and you just have to like uh, get a render done for like you can you can let it go for like five minutes and it's already good looking ish enough uh, good looking enough so that you can um, uh, like present samples and people can pick from that. And then you can go ahead and push the the project further. But yeah, it was it was a really, really interesting uh, experience. Yep. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And uh, Pauline, let me ask you: are, are you able to hear me okay? I think they said I was having a little bit of a mi audio. Yeah, I hear you a bit low, actually. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why that is actually happening. Okay, is it uh, any better now? It's, it's getting a bit better, yeah. Okay, how's that? Yeah, perfect. That's good. Okay, all right. Yeah, not sure what's going on there, but that's okay. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> a few more questions for you then. Um, yes. Someone else would like to know if um, have you textured like a full garment directly in Designer? Uh, are you ever using the UDIM workflow? 
Oh, uh, the UDIM workflow. Well, I actually learned what UDIMs were like two years ago. I had absolutely no idea it was a thing. <laughs> So uh, I'm still not really comfortable like working with it, but I do uh, like texture uh, pretty much any everything using Substance Designer. Yeah, but I try not to use UDIMs that much just because I don't know. I just I just don't feel that comfortable playing with it. But and there's always like kind of another way. I I rather like play around with, with my UV shells and get it right um, directly like in Maya or whatever to uh, get my material at the end uh, looking okay on the mesh. I don't know. Uh, are you using Substance Alchemist for any of the processes? Uh, mainly for a review when you have like a lot of, but it's, it's like, uh, mostly for work. I don't, I honestly don't use Alchemist, uh, on my, um, personal projects or on my free time at all. Uh, but it's, uh, it's really useful when you have to like, take a look at a lot of materials and try, try out if it works or not. So for work, I do. <laughs> And uh, th this question here is uh, a little bit more uh, technical, and it was asking if it's possible to rotate the pattern along a shape border. Do you have any techniques for that? Um, well, not not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that's I usually, tough. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think like in the last version of Substance Designer, you have uh, more options. I think it's in the tile generator. We have like a lot more uh, tweaking options for that kind of, of things, but I don't work on, uh, like I didn't have the chance to try out uh, this particular like uh, like nod recently, but I, I've seen like what you can do with it. There's like tiny demo videos on the YouTube channel where you can see what you can do with it. And I think that could be one of the best options right now to work with patterns along, uh, along a, spe a specific like uh, shape or whatever. But no, other than that, I usually do a fairly crappy technique using a lot of transformation and a lot of time. And it works, oh, it, it always worked okay so far. So I keep doing that, but there's probably like a lot of better options coming in the future. Yeah, there's always so many different ways to to handle this in designer, I guess, yeah. <laughs> which is weird. But I'm I'm like you, I'm like always using transforms and blends like multiple times. But but it works, you know, and you can see what you're doing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and that's uh, why like I, I tried to sell uh, substance designer when I was mostly working with uh, with students when I was teaching. Uh, I mean, Susan's painter is really good looking. And when you know Photoshop a tiny bit, you can like recognize like the UI and you know, okay, there's my layer. I know that it, I know it's hair. I know what it does. I know how it works. And so it's fairly easy to get a grip of it. Like you're just painting materials on whatever mesh you put in. So I, I, I understand why people go to painter more easily than designer, but I don't have that much fun using painter it's pretty much the opposite uh, and i like um, the way you can tweak anything with uh, with designer if there's anything that is bothering you on a specific pattern or a specific shape or whatever you can just tweak it directly in painter i don't i don't think it's that easy i don't know it's probably just my point of view with that my biased point of view but i don't know Oh yeah, yeah, and uh, the other thing too is um, that I was thinking about is like a lot of times you know you're, you're working on things and then like I'll ask like Nicholas you know Veerman like oh like how yeah. would you go about this and he'll always be like oh yeah well you use this this, this you know there's always like you should have done this this whole different way so there's so many different avenues you can take which I, I guess in a way kind of makes it a little challenging because like, uh, you know, how, how do you learn something, you know? But I guess what it really comes down to is like, you you just do what, like you said earlier, you do you. I mean, you you create what, and if it works, it looks good, then there you go, it worked. 
Yeah, exactly. And that's actually why a lot of uh, the, the renders I have on my portfolio are like uh, renders alone. And I don't share the graphs that much because usually it's just like a bunch of stuff that works, but it doesn't make any sense when you look at it. And if you'd ask me to find a specific part in the graph in the end, I, th there's probably a good chance that I don't know where it is. It just works that way. So, And that's yeah. also one thing that I've learned to uh, get right uh, with the, the whole uh, QA team that are... Uh, it's just fascinating to me, like how they can spot uh, stuff that you don't even you you don't even look at it when you're creating uh, that stuff, and that's where uh, uh, the line um, is. Uh, it's getting uh, blurrier now, but I for a while when I was beginning to work with the the source team, it was like a QA was almost like. Uh, um, restraining something like you couldn't do exactly what you want because it's cost too much but once you get a grip around it you actually realize that there's uh, for each problem you have like a hundred solutions and the one you get may be working but there's probably a better way to do it so yeah that's that's probably what i i've learned the most working with the team and as you said like having uh nicola Vierman, like close by if you have a question is a privilege that I discovered and it's honestly it's perfect when you have like tough questions he has an answer so that's perfect yes. for me <laughs> yes he is uh I, he is just the most absolute amazing person uh yeah. I mean just highly technically skilled but then also very artistically skilled as well and it's just man it is just an amazing opportunity to be able just to ask him questions like I ask him questions all the time it's funny because like I do this thing where like I'll, I'll ask him a question and then like I'll delete it because I feel embarrassed like oh I asked something <laughs> stupid. and so like he, he made this comment once that he said something like yeah I'll notice that like all of a sudden you sent me something and then it just disappears and I'm like yeah I was too embarrassed to ask you, you know? <laughs> so it's kind of funny uh, but uh, uh, Pauline I'll, I'll, I'll go ahead and ask you why don't you stop sharing your screen we kind of transitioned right into the QA and uh, Ooh, yeah, my okay. screen, our video view uh, that way I think we're just kind of staring at the same screen yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. We're going to continue with some Q and A, but uh, yeah, Micah had prompted me to, why don't we go ahead and make that transition? Yeah, sorry. Maybe it was a bit too fast. I, I just wanted to, I didn't want to spend too much time like working about um, talking about how I made the patterns because it, it wasn't like the most interesting part, I'd say in the material. It was more about like, okay, there's a toy, you can play with it. Now yeah. I can show you like how it works, what you can tweak and what you can't and just go do something with it. Oh yeah, no problems at all. And, and these, these streams are nice because they're just kind of like just a chat, you know, it's, it doesn't yeah. have to be rigid or anything, but uh, yeah, there are, there are uh, some more questions. So we'll just keep, keep moving through here. Um, th this other question was asking about like, I, I think like really early on when we were talking about the shapes, you, mm -hmm. you had, you, you know, you went to the beginning of your graph and you showed that you had, well, a single shape and, yeah. you, you know, you derived everything. So the question is, someone was asking, is it possible to create any pattern creation with a single shape? I think that's what they're talking about. Like, I mean, in that case, it, it worked, but is there scenarios where like, oh, there's this very complex shape and I, I can't do it, but I guess you have other techniques and tools. Yeah, I, I think like um, when you when you finally understand how uh, the the shape you're trying to get is made, uh, it get it gets really easier. And that way, uh, I don't know if you really paid attention, but at the beginning of that graph, I had ex I had a disc, but I also had like just after that a transformation because a disc. If you take a disc and you scale it like a lot, it becomes a square, and you don't have to worry a lot about having a square or not. It's just like understanding how uh, maps work, how uh, eight maps uh, work, and how like um, a basic thing like in black and white, well, what the black uh, does in the material and what the white does and how you can like um, play around with those shapes and it's, it may sound a bit abstract because it is, but like you, you just have to deconstruct the shapes as much as you can. And once you, uh, 
once you like understood really like how how do I do that thing without having like how do you make a triangle for example without having uh, a triangle you just have like a disc or a square and you have to like think uh, another way and that's actually how I I've created most of the patterns it was just like okay, I would love to do exactly that thing, but I can't. So how do I do almost the same thing? And that's usually how I get those really intricate patterns that don't always look really that good from up close, but sometimes it works and that's perfectly fine. And that's also why there's usually two or three uh, different materials before the one that I post on either our station or whatever. It's usually like the third, yeah, the, the second of or third uh, material with the exact same ID. It's just that I tried, it didn't work. So I try again another way and it works okay-ish. So let's try again. And third time, uh, I think it's that the third time's a charm. It's an English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. But that's, I, I, that's really cool to hear you say that though, because like, you know, even for myself, when I'm trying to create stuff and I struggle and I, th I feel like, like I'll start and oh, it's like, throw it away. You know, like, oh, it's no good. Let me start again. And then I feel discouraged and I'm sure maybe other people do, but, but even someone as, as experienced and, and at such a high level skill as yourself, I mean, you're kind of doing that too, you know, it's multiple versions and you kind of work your way. So honestly, I, I feel like that's very uplifting. And I think it was really cool for you to share that, that you're like, Hey, you know, I, I did a couple versions and it didn't look good. I kind of tossed yeah. them aside and tried again. So that, that's, that's, I think that's really uplifting. Um, so see, yeah, lots a few other questions here. This one was asking if you've worked on any, anything on a shoe material, I guess, related to like shoe materials, uh, and, and, and the other, it's kind of a second part of it is, um, how did you, uh, learn to take that extra step to f making something photorealistic? Um, uh, for the shoe part of the question, uh, I didn't, it's a really, uh, really like complex it's an other world inside the world of fashion and like everything like like uh, jewelry or uh, or shoes yeah or uh, accessories is it's basically a whole a whole another world it's something completely different that you can't really um, uh, like it's probably the same techniques but it's not uh, the one that I know the best uh, and I just like, I'm more into outfits and fabrics and less about um, other accessories. So not really, I didn't get the chance to work on that. Uh, and the second part of the question was? Yeah, it was just, I guess, asking like, uh, let me try to find it. Did this, how did you learn to take that extra step to make it photorealistic? I guess, you know, do you have like, any thoughts on that? Like going from, you know, making something look, well, it looks well photorealistic. Yeah, uh, well, actually I, I tried to make some stylized stuff before. Like when I started really um, on Substance Designer, I thought, uh, I found a tutorial on YouTube, like for stones, stylized stones. Um, and I tried to do that and I, quickly, very quickly realized that stylized is way harder to get uh, to get good looking in the end. It's like a completely different um, uh, ID behind the material. And I think the, the photorealistic part of the material is it's honestly because it's easier to get. I, I, in my opinion, I, at least, it's way easier to get like a photorealistic uh, material than a stylized or sem semi-stylized material. So it's, it's, it's the easy way, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, another question here. Uh, what is your approach to designing a pattern from scratch? And it's asking like, uh, you know, like for example, like picking shapes, patterns, tiling, uh, you know, the, from the moment you create a, bl a blank file. Yeah, uh, well, it depends. I, I usually have uh, a very kind of clear idea of what I want in the end. Because, like, I always start um, projects by the, the wrong hand. Uh, and starting, I already have in my head the, the final ra render that I want. 
but I don't know how to get that. <laughs> so I know that I want something that looks like that with that kind of atmosphere and uh, shininess and stuff, but I don't know how to get that. And I usually, from the moment I get the ID to the moment I uh, launch uh, Substance Designer, there's usually a few, I'd say, days of uh, reference, uh, looking up for references, pictures, and, and looking at videos. And I just spend a lot of time on Wikipedia to, to just try to get the, the better, have an, uh, kind of an overall vision. Uh, for example, if we take the, like the, the lace, uh, the lace material here, uh, the, the pattern was made out of, uh, I think there's like a dozen pictures that I've saved and they were all kind of similar uh, in the shapes and in the patterns and you just have to pick whatever you like and it's like, okay, I like that part, but not that one. So I'll just pick that part, recreate it and select another part from another uh, reference and do a bundle of stuff like that and just pick whatever you want. And if you have no idea, because I'm, I'm a really bad creator, but I am a really good, ex, uh, like I, I create stuff easily, easily when I have references, but I, can't really like create patterns from scratch at, on the top of my head. So I usually go look for references a lot and I use uh, pretty much always um, either pictures or or videos or things that I found. It's the, ma the, the magical part of the internet is that whatever you've, you're looking for, you pretty much kind of, yeah, you can find it. Looking at the right place, you can find anything. So. Oh, yeah. Yep. Uh, do you use uh, some math uh, to create specific patterns? Um, well, no, <laughs> not directly. <laughs> I mean, using nodes is basically using math, right? But I'm yeah. not the math people at all. Um, I've discovered uh, a, a tiny bit of functions recently. Are you creating some stuff? Um, uh, a material and it was like my first working function and it was doing basically nothing but I was so proud um, <laughs> and so I, I don't I would love to know how to do that and how to like I think we were talking about it with a with a colleague of mine like um, the base like how to work with shapes and work with transform and, and blends and stuff like that it's like the, the basic level of substance designer and then you try to get like more into uh, complex uh, patterns and, and different stuff. And then the next level is like the FX map and the pixel processor. And I would love to know how to use them, but I don't. So, so I, do, uh, I do work with whatever nodes are already in the soft and it usually works pretty fine. And that's how I, I managed to get like that weird way of thinking, like I want a triangle, but I have a circle, what do I do? Uh, it was basically the same thing because when you know math, you can do anything with designer, but I don't know math, so I, I do triangles with their circles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's awesome. I, I, I completely, uh, I'm in the same boat. Like, I, yeah. yeah, I like what you're saying. Cause it is, it's magical. And if you, and mm -hmm. if you look at Nicholas, you know, going back to Nicholas Veerman, like you ask, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, like he's literally like a magician, you know? And it's like, you know, you see this and to me, it's like, you know, it's just math, but to me, it's like, whoa, he, he it's actual magic, you know? Yeah. And it's I know. like, I know. And I remember like, like when I was, when I was in high school, man, I remember like I, I was in art classes and they're like, well, what are you going to do when you grow up and that kind of stuff. And I was like, ah, it doesn't, you know, I was like always failing math and they were like, you know, I was like, it doesn't matter. I'm going to be an artist. I don't need math. And it was like the yeah. dumbest thing I've ever said in my life, you know? And yeah. it's like, I mean, talk about being haunted by like a stupid decision. Like, you yeah. know, so now here it is, I can barely add numbers together uh, because mm -hmm. they didn't pay attention in school. And it's like, wow. So you do need math, <laughs> it turns out. Yeah, kind of. But, but, but yeah, yeah, but you don't, I mean, yeah, like you said, you don't need it. I mean, designer, there's so many different ways you can work, but it's just, it, yeah. uh, you know, there's there's a lot of other things you could do as well. But mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I still say like, yeah, you're, you're not really hampered by not being able to do it. I see lots of amazing artists producing 
you know, amazing work. And you'll ask them like, oh, no, I, I didn't use pixel processor. I didn't, I didn't do any functions. I just did, you know, this way and it looks amazing, you know? So I guess, yeah. like you said, you know, I love that quote, you, you, you do you, uh, you know? <laughs> yeah, funny. but it's, it, yeah. it's exactly yeah. that. And I ask, I've been to. asked a lot uh, when I was first posting like uh, very intricate patterns and showing the graph that was humongous. And I was like, yeah, okay. And people were like, yeah, okay, but wouldn't it be easier if you just did, did that on ZBrush or in Photoshop? And yeah, probably it would be easier, but it's it's more fun that way just let, let me do me and you do you yeah and so yeah that's why i i try to uh to encourage that and let people know that if you don't like a part of of a graph like there's a lot of different materials you can find everywhere on the internet and if you like um you like the finish of uh, um, a metal, for example, a, a metal material. You like the finish of it, but you don't like, I don't know, the edge map or whatever. Just take the part that you want and do something else with it. And that's that's the whole game, I'd say, with yeah. the Substance Designer. Well, uh, speaking of designer, how many hours do you normally spend in the program? I honestly, I I have no idea. All I can say is, Ever since I started, it was like uh, 2017. Um, I was uh, on substances. I, I was working all day, so you can uh, pretty much say six or seven hours a day. We can include it. And whenever uh, my work day was over, I was usually closing the work project to open a personal project. So yeah, I, I pretty much like ate, breathe, and drank a uh, substance designer for three years now. So wow. it's it's not healthy. I don't recommend it, but I've learned <laughs> a lot. <laughs> so, 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 oh, so you don't, you're saying the substance designer diet's not really healthy for you? Uh, I'm just I'd kidding. Say, <laughs> you know, I mean, you can try. <laughs> I yeah. did it. I'm alive, so it's fine. You know, but. Yeah. Uh, okay, so uh, how much time do you usually take to finish one material? Um, Does it vary, I guess? It, it kind of varies, but not that much, because like, I, I'm one of those people who get bored really, really fast. And so usually, if a material takes more than two days, I quit and it never see the light of day. So everything that is on my portfolio either took like uh, 10 to 15-ish hours, maybe a bit longer for some of the whole gar garments and like the outfits, but the material itself, like usually, uh, typically the, the sari, the pink one that is on my portfolio, the mesh took a day, the material took a day and a half, and it was already too long, and I hated it when I had to post it. So it was like, I was happy it was ending, and um, it just, it was just out that way. So yeah, two days and a half. And uh, for example, the, the list material that we took a look uh, a bit earlier, that one took, uh, it was the third and try, just to keep in mind. Um, but it took like probably like six or seven hours top. Yeah. The longer than that, I just get bored and I just like scrap everything. I look back at it and it, yeah, there's something wrong with that and there's something wrong with that. So let's just start out over again. And so I try not to spend too much time on That's stuff. Otherwise, I just I just start again too much. <laughs> Yeah, th this one, uh, this next question was asking, I guess, about time again. And I I'm sorry, I, I, I apologize. I can't pronounce what this word is. It's probably really stupid of me, but it's, it's how long did it take to create the Lenga, Lenga material? Yeah, yeah sorry, uh, sorry, guys. Yeah, me too. I mean, it's, it's an Indian word. I'm sorry if I pronounce every of the yeah. words wrong, but the, my heart is there. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I'm with you. Yeah, I, I want to <laughs> say it right, and I just, I can't. Uh, yeah, uh, and that one specifically is specifically took, uh, yeah, probably probably two days because you have like uh, I first uh, started with the only the bottom part, so where you have all the trims put together, and then the variations. So for the top and the middle part were made after, and there was 
quite a lot of QA on that too. So they took probably overall like two or three days, something like that, maybe more. Honestly, I, I can't remember really. And uh, see, oh, th th this is an awesome question too. Are, are you going to make uh, dedicated tutorials like your fabric tutorial with Level Up was fantastic. Uh, and I guess people are asking, are you gonna do more? Well, I do have a very good news <laughs> for the no, All right, yes. Uh, and yeah, there's a, a tutorial we're gonna be up probably this weekend, I hope. We'll see, uh, probably this weekend, and it's a two-part tutorial. Uh, the first part is how to create a whole dress in Marvelous Designer, and the second part is how to texture it using uh, some of the materials from the fashion, the drop fashion that, that is on uh, Substance Source, and the uh, lace material that is that we just take a look at. Oh, that's awesome. Where uh, will those tutorials be? Uh, they will be uh, available for free on my YouTube channel. You can oh, look awesome. For yep. Okay, yeah. Um, I guess Vincent and Marine, they're in the chat, and uh, maybe maybe they can post a link to that. But that, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, if, I, if I can take, like, uh, is it okay if I show my screen, like, for a little second? Oh, I sure. have, yeah, like, go ahead. Um, tiny images for that. So Yeah, let's do it, yeah. Yeah, so those are the, the, the thumbnails for the videos that will be like part one, part two. And so we're creating that same dress. And it's the same idea for the people who saw um, the, the level up tutorial. It was pretty much the same idea, um, but like with uh, two years, like a year and a half gap between the two. So it's not really the same material, not really the same technique, but uh, the same idea overall. So, yeah. That's awesome. And and so for part one, you're, you're actually going to show Marvelous Designer. I've been wanting to learn that. So it'll be, it's, it's awesome. You're going to show how yeah. that works. That's yeah, exactly. Great. And it's, uh, it's basically like how I've created that dress from scratch uh, using only one picture reference. Because like you can get all the, the reference picture you want and you can spend a lot of time uh, gathering references and looking for all the points of view. But usually when... I mean, in my case, when I find something that I really love, there's only one picture of it and I can find like the back or the size of that same dress. So it was like, how do I manage to get that dress in 3D using only one picture and texturing it with materials that are already existing? Um, and just, yeah, put it, putting everything together really quickly and to be honest, I had the idea of that tutorial like the next day after it was published. So I started last Thursday, I guess. And the first video was uh, was finished like uh, maybe three hours ago, <laughs> something <laughs> like that. So I hope it's gonna be this weekend, but maybe it's gonna be a bit yeah. longer. The first part will be this weekend for sure. The second we'll have to see. Okay, that's that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, great. And uh, yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, Pauline, you can go ahead and stop sharing your screen and yep. uh, we'll, we'll look to kind of just close things out. I do have just one more question for you. And mm -hmm. this one is um, just asking how you started out. Uh, like, how did you learn? Like, what courses did you look at? Can you can you give some insight there? Well, uh, you Wes, were actually my first teacher. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've watched a lot of uh, tutorials on the YouTube channel, on the Substance YouTube channel. And the thing is, with those uh, materials, it was really interesting because you could create, like, there was mostly, most of the, the tutorials you can find are for, like, creating wood or creating stones or stuff like that, really kind of game-ready materials. Um, I wanted to both learn how to create great materials, but I wanted to have fun too. And so that's how I started to create like a basic wood material, but adding a pattern in the 8map and creating like uh, abstract flowers and stuff like that. And I actually kind of 
loved it. So I kept going and honestly never stopped. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's, that's great. Yep. Well, um, Pauline, I guess we can go ahead and start uh, closing things out. So, um, you know, I just really want to thank you for uh, joining me here today uh, and walking through your material. It was, uh, it was just, it was really inspiring. It was awesome to see, you know, your, your, how you work, you know, your, your ideas, how, how things kind of come together. Uh, it's, it's really awesome. And then also, I just, I really want to congratulate you. So glad that, uh, that you're yeah, full-time, you. full-time and jo uh, <laughs> joining the team. I mean, you've been, you've been around already for a while, but now it's yeah. awesome that, 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 you know, we're all uh, kind of together uh, in this, in this big team. So uh, I, for one, am thrilled to be able to work uh, with you. I can't wait to ask you all kinds of questions. So uh, yeah, I'll try not to ask something stupid and then delete it. So you watch can, for there's that. no I'm, I'm stupid gonna... questions. It doesn't exist. <laughs> I get embarrassed and then I, I remove my questions. So watch, watch that might happen. Uh, but uh, yeah, so it's, it's really great. Do you have any kind of last things that you want to shout out or anything, any closing statements? Well, I, yeah, I'd like to thank, uh, I mean, I was working alone on, alone on that collection, but there's actually a lot of people who helped me without knowing. Um, and there's a few people uh, that really help, like giving references and uh, giving tips and stuff like that. So I will probably forget a lot of you, and I'm sorry. But uh, on the top of my head, I would really thank uh, all the QA team, uh, Anthony and Gaetan. You're like you're the best. I just I just don't understand what you do, but you do it great. So keep going. Uh, there's also Daniel uh, and Eric and Jace and like you guys are amazing just you're so inspiring and it's really a pleasure to have that chance to talk with all of you and just exchange on ideas and tips and stuff like that uh, and Andre too and like there's a lot of people I, I don't know if I can thank them all but uh, there was a lot of people involved in the creation of those material and yeah, thank you from the bottom of my heart. Really, it was a great adventure. Oh, that's awesome, Pauline. Yeah, I, I know exactly what you mean. Like everybody that we work with on the substance team, and I guess you know they not 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 people don't get to really see the behind the scenes, you know. But like everyone, everyone that you come across that's in the yeah. substance team is just such a. They're so wonderful. Everybody is so wonderful, and it's like it's such a family environment. I just love it. So yeah, I, I'm just again, I, I'm so happy you're here. You know. It's, it's <laughs> Thank you. And I, I, I thought for a long time that I was the only weirdo, like looking at too close at stuff and being fascinated by the materials. But <laughs> we're, we're a, a happy kind of weirdos. And I really love the fact that you can talk about rocks for hours with people. It's just, I just love it. <laughs> yeah, that was great. I'm sure they're like, there's lots of other weirdos like all of us online yeah. as well, probably watching this. Uh, but again, yeah, just thanks. Uh, one other thing I just want to announce, uh, we have a live stream, uh, our next live stream is coming up on December 17th. Uh, this one's going to be with uh, Steve uh, Talkowski. Uh, Steve is awesome. I don't know if he's watching this, but if he is, Steve, hey, man, uh, I can't wait to hang out with you on that live stream. Steve is such a cool guy. Uh, he's really into robots, uh, which, and he makes lots of really cool robots. So what Steve's going to do is run through like basically like a whole work, a workflow of Adobe tools. Like he's going to be using uh, Medium. Uh, which is really cool, uh, our VR sculpting software, uh, Painter. He's also going to jump into uh, Adobe Dimension for rendering and stuff. But uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing like what he's going to show with Medium and how that works as a VR sculpting app. So really cool stuff uh, coming on December 17th. And uh, as always, everybody just watching, just stay tuned to like our Twitter account. We're always kind of, you know, posting out info, new stuff that's coming and things. But um, anyways, just want to thank everyone for joining us today. Uh, stay safe, everyone. Take care. And we will see you on the next live stream. Thanks, Pauline. And see you guys thank later. You. Bye. Bye.